Okay, we're at our first fatigue testing machine, and let's talk about safety. First of all, we have some guards, so you can't reach in to the area here. And the other thing we have is a plug where we can plug and unplug this machine. When we're loading the sample into the machine, I want this to be unplugged. Okay, that way if somebody comes up here and hits start, the machine doesn't take off with you on there. So unplug this when we're loading the sample. So we have our safety guards on the machine. And what we're going to be working on is the front side of the machine. We're going to take the guards off and we're going to work from this side, mounting our sample into the machine. Okay, we just tighten these up and I have the sample to the left side of the aluminum block there. So at this point, we just tighten this up. I'm going to slide this into this housing all the way to the back. And then I'm going to come in here and turn in these screws back here in the back. I'm going to get it where it's snug. And then I'm going to take my wrench and put underneath there and make sure that we tighten those up so that we're securely holding this in the fixture. Okay, we just finished mounting our sample, and now what we're gonna have to measure is the amount of displacement that we go up and down as this rotates. Okay, so we don't wanna do this too many times, but you notice it's gonna find that spot where it's level right here. So we're gonna have our digital calipers here. And one of the nice feature we have on this is if we were to move it down here, we can hit zero, and it would zero off there, and then if we change something, we can measure that displacement. That's gonna help you out with math errors on this. So what I'm gonna do is come in here, and I'm gonna measure the very back corner right here, okay, on the sample. I'm gonna measure that from the table, and then I'm gonna cycle this where this comes up to its maximum value. I'm gonna measure that same dimension. So I'm gonna come in here and probably put my tool this way, where it's down on the bottom of the table and then pull up and I'm gonna measure off at the end of that. So this is gonna require your teammates to help you out and right there I can zero that out, okay? So I've zeroed that out and then I'm gonna come up here and with that on there, I can measure the top of that stroke right there and I've got my value. Now, while we're talking about this, I can change how much I change that stroke of going up and down by right here. And so we have it set at one, so hopefully we should be getting the same values if we change it, it will do a percentage difference on either side so we can actually change the amount of fatigue we have in this machine for going up and down. And that's gonna change our fracture line that's gonna develop in that broken sample. We anticipate that we're gonna have a line dead center when it breaks, and we talked about that in the lecture. The next thing to do is come in and reattach the guard so that we don't get into the machine there. Now at this point, we're ready to plug the machine in. And so I'm going to come in and go ahead and plug it in, and the power is going to come on. And we have a series of controls here. The first thing we have is a counter, and if you hold this counter, it will zero out. So we want to zero the counter out. That's going to track how many times this thing goes around for one cycle. If you notice, we also have a little reflector tape on the top that's going to allow us to come in and measure the speed of the spindle using this tool right here. And so we can come in here and push that and it would tell us the RPM of the spindle as it turns. So we're gonna need to record that RPM once we turn it on. Now let's talk about how we turn this on. The first thing is we have a speed knob. Leave it at zero, come in here and hit start, nothing's turning. At any time you can hit stop and it will stop. If it doesn't, unplug it right there. You've got access to unplugging it if something happens. So I'm on start and what I'm gonna do is come in here and slowly turn this on to about, and you can hear it clicks on there, there's a secondary click. I'm gonna turn this on till I can get to about 500 RPM. And again, I'm gonna come in here and be testing and aim this at that, and right now I'm doing 170 something. So you and your teammates can sit there, make sure you stay out of the machine there, and I'm gonna go up to about 400 RPM. Okay, so I'm close to 400 RPM and I'm letting my test run. It's counting how many cycles and I'm just gonna let it run and we'll see how many hours of use we get out of this. Once the sample breaks, you just need to reach up here and hit stop. Don't unplug the machine yet because you need to read the value of how many cycles it took to break that sample. Once you record that, you can unplug the machine and then unmount your samples and then go look at the microscope at the fractured surface. Okay, we're at the rotary 
bending fatigue tester. Let's talk about some of the components we have. We have an emergency stop up here. We have a guard that goes over the part and there's going to be a sensor down here that this guard has to be in place for this experiment to run. We're going to keep our hands out of that area as it's running. Anything happens, just reach up here and press the e-stop and everything will stop. So to uncycle that, just untwist it and it'll pop back up. Other things that we have on here, this is a motor controller that's going to run the spindle. We're going to be running about 5,000 RPM in this experiment. This is a beam loading system right here that's going to allow us to pull on the samples at these two points. And so we're going to be setting weights on this to set the weight value on the unit. So let's go over and start talking a little about how to load our sample into this. Now before we do that, we need to make sure we have the weights off of this arm. We can lift this up and there's a little lever right here that we can pull out and that's going to keep this arm from going down. So we want to have that off so we're not putting any tension on this system pulling on the samples and it's going to let us load the samples in. Okay, at this point we're ready to remove the cover and I've got this off right here. It slides off and I'm going to set it back over here out of the way. And this is where we're going to load our sample. Now these are basically ER collets that we see very commonly used in machining. And this has this nice little wrench that's going to fit on these hexes. And it's going to slide down inside the machine right here so that we can slide the sample into the spindle here. Now what I recommend doing is sliding it far enough back that you can bring this one in to play and then slide these up where you're pretty centrally loaded here. Now the next thing we've got is a series of scales on this side and you're going to need to come in here and set this portion at seven and a half inches and this one at seven and a half inches. So I now have these both set at seven and a half inches and I've got my sample centralized here. So what I'm going to do next is come in here and tighten up these collets and I need them fairly tight because this thing is going to have a lot of force on it. I've got that tight, still at seven and a half and a seven and a half. I'm going to move over here to the other side and support that. And again, I need to tighten this one down. And so both of these are tight. I'm in the center. Everything is centrally loaded. I'm at seven and a half and seven and a half inches. Now this system can move around. If I pull this out, it can move. Okay. So you want to make sure that you're at seven and a half inches on both sides. And that basically these are running parallel, these two surfaces. This could be kicked over at an angle. So make sure that you're parallel at seven and a half, parallel at seven and a half. We're tight. I would say this sample is loaded and ready to go. Now let's talk about your statics here, your calculations you're going to have to have. First thing you're going to need to do is come in here and you're going to need to measure from here to here. These are your pivot points. So these are like your support loads. These are basically like arrows pushing this direction. Okay, so it's like pushing that direction right there because we're pushing this direction via these two cables. So we're going to need to take some more measurements. You're going to take the measurement from here to here. And then you're going to take the measurement from here to where it's pulling right here. So I know that distance. Likewise, I want to know how far it is from here. So I want to know those four measurements, the overall measurement here, the measurement here, and the measurement here. And then you could even double check it here and cross check your math. Now we can go do our statics and figure out what kind of bending moment we're putting on this sample. Now we're bending this sample. So if I had this ruler up here, for example, I'm bending that sample. Okay and we're bending it, the highest stress is going to be at the thinnest section, which is right here. So you're going to need to measure that diameter of that sample before we break it. So measure that, record that diameter, calculate your moment of inertia, your I value, and we're going to be able to do our statics and calculate what kind of stress we're putting on there. Now, once we have all this mounted up, we're ready to come in and put our guard back on. And I'm going to set this on here and set it up and check over here and it looks like the safety switch is going to be lined up and this is properly mounted. Again, stay out of this area, don't remove it while the machine is on. So at this point, we need to clear out some of the previous data and to do that, we're going to go to zero right here. Read the menus, don't just start pushing buttons. The only thing we want to zero out is going to be the revolutions, which is number four right here. So zero out number four, and now we're at zero revolutions. Do not zero out the load. We already have that zeroed out, and as we put load on it, it's gonna come up. We actually have some load on it right now, and as you see, we can go basically to zero when we take the loads off. So don't come in and zero out the load force, just the revolutions. Now, what we're gonna have to do is put our load 
onto the structure and you have a weight over here, you're gonna have to figure out where to put that and you're gonna have a wrench that you can adjust and move these two weights and you're gonna have to come in there and get your weights set up such that I can come up here to 65 pounds. Okay, now you're gonna probably get within a uh, half a pound or so and that's gonna be pretty good. What I'm gonna do is I'll do my final adjustment in here. I am gonna have to put the safety strap on that weight so it doesn't vibrate and pull off. So what you're gonna need to do is go around the yoke of the weight right here and this beam right here and make sure they're held tight so it doesn't slide off. So at this point we have our weight to 65 pounds and we're ready to start this. And all we have to do is come up here and hit the start button and it's gonna start capturing our revolutions. The other thing is capture the time that you started and record the time to failure. Once it stops and breaks, if it doesn't stop, hit stop and we'll stop the motor and then we can remove the guard and remove the sample. And again, we're going to be able to record the revolutions that it broke at. We're at the zoom microscope and normally we take images on this of our fractured surfaces. Some of these are so irregular in height and valleys that the focus doesn't maintain on this. So what you may want to do is mount the samples in the fixture that we normally use and then get your phone and come in here and zoom in and take a nice picture and focus of that failure. And again, I've got both specimens that we broke. And I've got them illuminated where I can see them real well and focused and then take a picture. And that way you can kind of look at the fractured surfaces there.